Hello YouTubers, my name is Axe Factor and welcome to the setup of Man Cave 1.0. Something that I've been kind of delaying and waiting on my contractor to really get started. As you can tell, we're in a basement with poured concrete walls and there's really not much else going on except for my drop screen and of course some of my FJ Westcott ice lights, which I'll explain what those things are used for in a couple seconds. We've been waiting on the contractor to frame in all these walls and make this an insulated and soundproof studio. This is room is actually going to uh, serve two functions. Number one, it's going to be my gaming and live streaming area. Number two, it's going to be where I'm doing my product reviews, unboxings, and of course benchmarks. I have companies send me a ton of stuff, such as the Sapphire Vaporex 290 card, which I still have to unbox, I still have to review, and some Samsung SSDs, along with other stuff. But I haven't had the space to do it. Well. Now I do, and I'm going to be starting without Man Cave 2.0 being completed because it's going to take them a while to get this done. The good news is this is just part of the basement. So as they're framing in these walls, putting the insulation, soundproofing, then of course drywall, and then painting it, I've got a whole other half of the basement that I can utilize so I can still be working late at night. The other half, once we're done, is going to be for the babies. They've got two rooms upstairs that they can play around in. They actually have their massive playroom, but we're going to give them a pimped out TV room down here. So I'm actually going to be doing custom cabinetry to get the computers off the ground and a custom desk. But so far, this is going to be my new utility desk, which just showed up when I was out of town and Mrs. X Factor was here, which is a problem because she's about 110 pounds. That desk is every bit of 100 pounds because it's steel reinforced legs and, of course, wood construction. This thing is an absolute beast. It can hold a ton of stuff on it. So let's get to these guys first because these are going to be very important. And, of course, that's a drop screen back there and that I can hide a green screen on it as well or hang a green screen on it as well. But these are... Ice lights by FJ Westcott. These are pure LED and they have basically uh, an intensity switch on them and they're wireless. There's a massive battery in here that'll let these things last for about two hours or you can plug it into the wall, then it'll last forever. Once they're charged up, you can throw them on there and of course they're handheld. Part of the thing that's going to happen when the contractors come in is they're going to rerun electrical because there's extra spots on the fuse box that's over to my left and they're going to rewire this entire room. So I'm not going to have to search for power outlets or fight for power outlets. There's going to be stuff in the cabinetry where the desk is going to build. I'm going to have a dedicated fuse in there so just my two computers can be on that so I don't have to worry about dirty power which is something you kind of contemplate when you have a lot of stuff set up and that's where this pure AV setup comes from that's bouncing on the BenQ box. That helps me keep the power clean basically and kicks off if there's any sort of issue and it's kicked off before at my old condo which I lived at for eight or nine years and that hasn't kicked off here yet so if there's anything in the stream, anything in the power that's bad it just kicks off right so it kind of saves you the headache and the reason why we're doing the cabinet tree number one the look and number two because this is a basement it's never had a drop of water in it according to the previous owner but you never know I've got an insurance policy for that stuff but if something was ever to happen it'd be two to three weeks before I got my money and that's the last thing I want to do getting the stuff off the ground gives me time to come down here and get it and you know it's kind of like a, a safety uh, level if you will so let's start talking about the setup getting to the first gangster thing that's a Marshall amp for my guitars. Well, why is that important? Because that's a mic stand. Well, why do you need that? Because there's two mics on here, and we're going to start explaining why that's going on. First, there's a Marshall USB number six, which is this gray guy right here, and this is USB. It goes right in the computer. This is an AKG mic. That is not USB. I have to run a USB converter down the line, and then it jumps to USB. Why are there two mics? Because there's two different computers with two different purposes. That's why there are two keyboards. The first computer on the left is a Corsair 350D. That is my streaming PC. That's where one mic goes. The bigger computer is a Corsair 650, which has the 780 Ti by EVGA overclocked with ACX cooling, has the other mic. That means while I'm gaming, I can both record my mic on my gaming PC and then I could still live stream and capture my mic. There's not really a good way to split off a mic into two different PCs, so that's why we go that route. And thanks to you guys, you guys tweeted me, hey, why don't you get a Roto PSA mic stand? So I've got one coming on Saturday. We're going to test it out on the setup, so hopefully I can have two of them and they sit perfectly when I need both. Most times, I don't live stream. I just need one mic. But when I do live stream, I can probably swing the second one in from the left, and away we go. So this keyboard is going to be changing very soon. You guys might already know uh, that little logo right there. That's a Razer keyboard. Of course, it's mechanical. But I want a 10 keyless. What's 10 keyless? This is gone. 
That allows me to get my mouse pad closer to me because if you notice where my palm sits, kind of sits close. I want this to be able to all move over so my palm naturally rests because I am a palm grip. I'm not a claw grip. So you're going to notice these are two Rocat mice. This is a Cone XTD, and I've got an optical on the way. I love this mouse. Uh, it is a very big mouse. I have a larger hand, and it contours to your thumb. It's got great grip, which I absolutely love as I grab it with my left hand. And this is just a Cone Pure, the smaller version, more like a death adder. Uh, but again, the great grip on the side with the contours there. And it's got a wonderful finish on this. Uh, I complain about a lot of mice because the finish on these gets slippery. They're not great for gripping. I've never had a problem with the Rocat uh, Cone XTD or the Pure. This is for the streaming PC. Don't use it a whole lot. This I use every minute of my gaming uh, time, basically. Then, of course, a Cord Nanny, basically, that's not even plugged in. Got the BenQ monitor, 120 hertz, which is great for me. I got to play with the 144 version at the DICE event, and I couldn't tell the difference because I peaked at 90 frames and had about 60 frames average. Then, of course, the wireless, or I'm sorry, the wired setup, which allows you to control different settings. This monitor has something called black equalizer. So on the dark maps, I can have something that helps me out there. And then of course, on the brighter maps, I can tone it down just a little bit. And that's just monitor side. And of course, the brand new webcam up on the top, which you guys are familiar with now over on my live stream. And just a typical LG LED IPS monitor. That's it. This is where the chat goes. This is where Pandora goes. And down here, you see the Corsair K60. This guy actually comes from that. But that actual Corsair K60 crapped out on me in the finals of a Battlefield 3 tournament. It stopped canceling inputs, which is the worst thing that could possibly happen. So that's why that's on the streaming PC now. I have a bunch of macros made for my different uh, scenes on the OBS, which I use. I don't use XSplit, so I can just hit a single key or respond to chat with this keyboard right here. And it doesn't give me much problem because it's just for the streaming PC. Now, this guy goes to that. I got used to having this as a setup. It raises my hand a little bit, and my hand never cramps when I use this thing. It never gives me problems. Guess what? It slides right on to the raise, <laughs> Razer keyboard. So I'm looking for a 10 keyless keyboard. I know I might not be able to use this unless I get the tournament edition of this. So that, that may be what we're doing here, getting the Razer 10 keyless version of this, uh, because I can't find a ducky in the keys that I want. And then one of the last things, of course, is my mouse pad. Steel Series Heavy. That is a thick heavy cloth mouse pad. I love this thing. I've used uh, mouse pads from plastic to metal uh, to thin cloth to thick cloth. This is the best mouse pad that I've ever used. And basically the two different PCs with the mixer amp. Let's talk about this guy with the spaghetti monster in the background right here. This allows me to control what comes in to my Audio-Technica headset. All right. So one channel is my gaming PC in stereo. The other channel is my streaming PC, which I run my music off of. So as I'm listening to music on my streaming PC, I can dictate how much of a mix. Do I want any music? Do I want the stream to hear the music and me not hear any? Do I want my master sound up, which as I adjust the music, I simply twist this knob right here, and then everything turns up. So when you hear me talking about fixing my mix, that is what I'm doing. Either I'm turning the music down to my headset, turning it up or adjusting the master volume. This is great. So when I hear a new sub, uh, some Wookiee hype dropping, that is where that comes from. So everything's on a separate channel. If I don't want to hear PC, the streaming PC at all, I turn that off. If I just want to be the gaming PC, I turn this to whatever volume and just adjust as I go. This is a great little Mackie amp, the 402 VLZ3 small enough and works properly for two gaming PCs, giving you lots of different EQ options and balance options for the main PC, which again, I have split into stereo mode. So this is setup 1.0. It's gonna be changing pretty drastically as I get the mic stands in here, and hopefully the contractor gets his butt in here and starts with the construction, which only should take two to three weeks. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the Man Cave 1.0. If you wanna see what's in my computer, go see the link down below, including my SSD by Evo, which is on sale for $109.99, including free shipping. That's a 250 gig SSD, Samsung Evo. And of course, any other parts will be provided down below. As always, YouTubers, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. And we'll see you soon.